Fate is a great franchise. If you spend any time in the Weep community, you've probably at least heard of it. I myself would probably even consider it to be my favorite franchise of all time. But it can be quite, let's say, menacing for beginners to get in. However, luckily for you, as someone who understands about 30% of the franchise, I will be your tour guide into the Fade universe, telling you what and when to watch and just how to get started in general. So, you know, let's just get started. Where should you begin with Fate? Quite simple. <sighs> Read the visual novel. Okay, let's say you don't have the time or energy to go looking for this visual novel, which honestly, it's not that hard to find if you can just, you know, do a little Google search, but whatever. Let's say you don't want to do it for whatever reason, it's the wrong reason, it's the wrong decision, but you just don't want to do it. Well, you would probably want to start with the anime, right? But you know, then the problem continues with which anime to start. And I guess basically the core is the main fade timeline, I guess. Well, there's basically four main entries into the fade timeline. Technically, five possible anime you could watch, but we're just not gonna count the Unlimited Blade Works movie. Um, you know, we have the, the three fade routes Best King route, Rin Thai Saka, and Thick Purple and the prequel Fate Edgelord. In case you're not aware what exactly, uh, why exactly there's a split in the in the uh, timeline, that's because because you know all three Fate routes are they're not they're not like following each other. They are like different versions of the same events essentially. Just you know in the original visual novel, that's just how it went. In case you're not aware of how it works. So when looking at this and you know fi figuring out where to start, you will probably end up at Fate Zero, which is also what a lot of people recommend, and it's probably the most um, popular entry of the franchise. But what exactly is Fate Zero? Well, you see, it's, it's the prequel to Fate Stay Night. Oh, wh what it's about? So, uh, you see, uh, the, the, main, the main thing about Fate is basically the Holy Grail War, um, in which Seven mages summon seven ancient heroic spirits and kill shit out of each other. And, you know, in, in the Holy Grail War and Fate Zero deals with the fourth Holy Grail War, where seven mages summon servants and beat the shit out of each other. To get a wish in the end. There's only like really three people who, who have a wish they want granted, but that, that, that doesn't matter, it's just. That's, that's just the concept. So anyway, that's the concept and basically, you know, the specific story for Zeros. Um, we are following our main character, Kiritsugu, his 10-year-old sex doll and his glorified human punching bag. We will get back to that later. And they're, at, you know, attempt to, to win this thing and get the Holy Grail. It's quite, it's quite simple, really. Some people say Zero is peak fiction and the best of the franchise, and anything after that is just a disappointment. Some people also believe the world is flat. <laughs> but anyway, is, is Fate Zero good? Yes, I think it's a good anime. Is Fate Zero a good entry point into the Fate franchise? I would think not. It's not the worst thing you could start with, but you know, it is it is a bit different from other Fate properties, you know, it might get you a bit of the wrong idea how the whole thing just really feels or is. And you know, as a, as a prequel, obviously a lot of like references and other things will just go over your head and you will not realize them, so I think... Um, uh, the the experience of watching it as a prequel is better than watching it as the experience of the introduction to the Fate franchise. But if you don't wanna, if you if you don't start with Zero, then you know with, what should you start watching Fate? Um, <laughs> the 
Dean's Day Night. It's, it's not necessarily a hot take to say that the Dean version of Fate's Day Night didn't age quite so well, especially to its UFO table counterparts. But nonetheless, I would say it's probably the easiest and most beginner-friendly way to enter into the Fate franchise. And I think you should really give it a try. It's, I would say it's basically guaranteed that if you like Fate Stay Night from Dean, you will basically like the rest of the franchise. And if you if you don't like it, then just give Zero a try and basically after that you could probably move on. And another personal reason why I would definitely say you should, if you if you don't want to play the visual novel, you should give the, the Dean version a try, is that it's, you know, it's, an adaptation more or less of the fate route and it's such it's probably the best anime version there is of Saber because in Unlimited Blade Works in Heaven's Fear she has more of a minor role and technically one of the main characters in Zero I and others too believe that her character in Zero is just so wrong and honestly, at this point, I would even consider Zero not to be a direct prequel, but more like a slightly different time and a what-if situation, because Zero Saver just sucks. So if you if you ever wondered why so many people go crazy for this 1 meter 54 blonde div, then this is probably your best bet at it. It's probably your, the, the best way you can try to figure out what exactly makes Saver so popular. And if you're really fancy, you can also uh, try listening to Garden of Avalon on YouTube. It's basically just Saber's extended backstory. It's a, it's a really it's one hour long. It's no big deal. And I would highly highly recommend it. Watch it. It's good. Trust me. Trust me. It's good. So yeah, that's the Fate route more or less. The next one would be Unlimited Blade Works, which deals with mostly with a certain red themed tsundere as well as with Rintosaka and well it's it's really good um, considering it's also from UFO table it's kind of made as somewhat of a sequel to Fate Zero so I would probably I would probably recommend watching Fate Stay Night, Fate Zero and then Unlimited Blade Works because I just I, I, I think that's probably the, the best order to kind of experience the main series so far. And you know, then you could go to Heaven's Field, you know, the thick purple one. Which is good. It's not it's not a, a 24 episode anime like the others. It's three movies. Um, I think they're good. But you should definitely watch the other things first. Because Heaven's Field is is not a good starting point. Okay, so that was a quick overview about the main Fate timeline, so to speak. Um, what's next? Well, the next are basically all just kind of spin-offs and parallel universes. There's no real watch order to them, no, once you've seen some of the main Fate timeline and know the basic premise and concept, you can basically watch all of them in any order you wish. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna give a quick overview of all that. Apocrypha is basically fate, but instead of a battle royale, they made a team battle. You know, they have two teams of seven servants fighting together now, and for the Holy Grail, I think. I, I don't remember a lot of it. Um, I just remember. I just remember Shakespeare, French Saber, Tomb Boy Saber, and a giant flying fucking castle for some reason. And that and that and big game. Yeah, it's good, it's good. It's not bad. Seven out of ten. So Fate Prototype is a short anime short which you know uh, kind of depicts the prototype version of Fate's Day Night. It, quite self-explanatory uh, you know it's it's a nice thing for fans to see how the story originally was supposed to play out it's just you can definitely see a lot of you know parallels that were carried over into the final product 
but also some strange concepts like King Arthur being a man. <laughs> crazy concept, oh really, it's hilarious. Well, Lord Melloy II's case files is basically the, you know, if you have seen Zero, the wacky adventures of Wilder and Ryder, minus Ryder, plus Saber technically, it's quite cool. I don't, I don't know, I don't know what's the deal with Grey. She looks like Saber. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just gonna Google it. Three hours later. Yeah. Okay. So uh, there was. That was a trip, but yes, basically uh, we are following um, the uh, the. Uh, it's kind of a fate detective mystery show where you know an adult waver from Fate Zero is just doing magic things. It's quite nice for the world building and stuff it does. You know, it is another way to explore more of like the the magic world. And stuff. I would, I would recommend it, especially if you've like watched Zero and are somewhat interested in the Fate universe. I would say it's a, it's a good watch. I think it's on the moon or something. I, I, I honestly don't know. I'm pretty sure you need to have played the extra games to understand what Fate Extra is about. Um, because you know, I, I watched it, I had no idea what's going on, so... If, if, you, if you've played the games, you probably should give it a watch, otherwise... You know, it's just... It, I, I, don't, I don't think you will get much out of it. <laughs> well, Fate Collide is another parallel universe, and it's basically... Fate Magical Girls, focused on Ilya. You know, it's quite nice and quite harmless, and until it isn't. And personally for me it was uh, similar to Girls of Panzer, in the sense that I initially started watching it for, for the meme. But in the end I was actually quite invested in the story and the characters and how it would all turn out, so... I'd say it's a good show, I would recommend giving it a watch, but... Do so at your own risk. Also... At least for me, Fate Collide was when I truly started to appreciate um, Shiro's character, you know, the, the main character of the main Fate. Um, I, despite me preaching about it, I didn't actually read the visual novel at first, so uh, I didn't quite like Shiro. Um, I think his Unlimited Blade Works version is quite good, but the Dean one is not that great, so. I was kind of opposed to him, but after watching Collide, I, for the first time, you know, he has some, he has some good, good parts in there. So I, for the first time, started realizing that he's quite, quite a good character, and I liked him. And I would, so I would recommend giving it a watch just for, just for the sake of Shiro, essentially. But if you don't want to sit through three seasons of basically softcore lolly porn. Then at least give Oath Under Snow a try. Oath Under Snow is basically the prequel movie to the whole Collide thing. It has much less of the whole um, the lolly thing. Honestly, it's it's a really good movie, and I think you know it gives a new perspective on Shiro and other characters, but mostly Shiro. And if so, if you at this point are not really convinced of Shiro. And I would definitely give this one a try too, just to maybe better understand how he, him and how he works. Fate Unlimited, Do I mean uh, Fate Grand Order, is a mobile game about the Fate franchise and one of the world's largest salt mines. Um, basically, the concept is that human history is fucked and you need to go back in time and fix it and there's magic there it's well it's quite quite good and I would definitely recommend the game for its story not so much for the whole gambling sh shit 
But you know, if you don't want to try to download a game that's not even available in Europe, then um, you could probably give uh, the movie a try. The movie deals with the first singularity and kind of explains the whole shit. And it basically goes something like Her, we are good mages. Her, I am evil speedwagon and I want to destroy human history. Oh no, everyone is dead and main character Kuna stranded in fan service city. Her, I'm good. Her, I'm bad. Her, we defeated the bad. Holy Grail, yay! Singularity cleared, history restored. Woo! Let's do that like six more times. So yeah, that's basically the, the, the premise of Fate Go. Um, you know, the uh, honestly, the first couple of singularities are not that good. I, besides genre's cool alter, I don't really think there's anything worth remembering. Um, but boy. Boy, it starts changing with the sixth one. So the sixth singularity, uh, the Camelot one, uh, is where things start to get animated again and start to get really interesting and the promise of this basically is that instead of, you know, throwing away Excalibur as it was told to, Bedevier doesn't throw it away and so King Arthur is essentially forced to keep on living and just wanders the world with uh, one of the most divine artifacts of all time and essentially what happens is she turns into a myth, I mean uh, she turns into a, a goddess and then she gets summoned into the Holy Land and starts nuking people. Which is, yo, know, cool. But Bedevier doesn't really like that. He thinks that's not cool. And so he wants to go like, hey, you talk to her and say like, hey, maybe not. You know, then, and then there's a seventh singularity, Babylonia, which is also really nice. Um, because in it, Gilgamesh is not a dick. Which is a thing I didn't know I needed and you know friendly Gilgamesh is really nice there's also totally not Rin uh, and yeah those two are kind of the main setting points of the whole thing if I'm being honest <laughs> but no it also has a great story it's basically you know humanity is about to get destroyed and Gilgamesh is like no so he stops them you still have to help him a bit but like basic basic yes yeah, Pretty neat, pretty nice. <laughs> Carnival Phantasm is the greatest piece of media ever created. Period. It's the 10 year anniversary special of Type Moon. It's basically a big crossover of all their works. Basically, just mo mostly Fate and Tsukihime. So, you it is recommended if you have a bit of knowledge about you know the other things outside of Fate. But yeah, it's, it's amazing. There's also Fate Grand Carnival, which is 20 year anniversary, I guess. Not that good, but still okay. And then there's today menus on the Emia family, which is just Fate, Dice of Life. It's just a lot of cooking. It's the second greatest piece of media ever created, basically. Uh, so, um, in, so in the unlikely event anyone actually watched this video to this point, I guess I just want to make a quick apology because, you know, while editing it and stuff, I kind of realized that it's really not a good introduction at all. It's 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 not it's not a good entryway for new fans. It's not something worth discussing for old fans. It's basically just me rambling and basically saying one or two sentences to every piece of fate anime out there so <laughs> but at this point i was already too committed and i uh, just thought you know what make it anyways upload it who cares in a couple of years i will be able to look back uh, on my opinions on fate uh, at this point in time which is at least something good i guess um so again i just want to apologize for this piece of shit video that it turned out to be